Uh, DJ Rip. I've been DJing over 20 years. And the way I got into DJing was basically growing up in New York City, I was exposed to a lot of hip hop, a lot of Latin music, a lot of music in my family. And me and my friends, we would get together and play music for our friends and family. That's basically how I got into it. Just we got our we got ourselves a couple of turntables with our summer work money, a mixer, and we would just jam out in these uh, in these little events. And just watching people have a good time was always a was always something that that fed us, made us happy. So I DJed in uh, Rockwell, Miami, which is now called Vendome, um, Joe's Bar, and a few other clubs and lounges around the Miami area that was mostly Latin music. Um, the coolest place I DJed at was uh, it was uh, 2011 after Ultra, and it was one of these after parties. There were supposed to be three DJs, one didn't show, and then it was just me and DJ John Vieira just switching back and forth. And eventually the crowd start, started asking for me to stay on, to which I said, you have a problem with that? John said, no, go for it. I went from 12 a.m. to 5 a.m. And next thing you know, I had people coming in off the street asking me who I was. And we had to come in and find out who, who you were because the music that you're playing was so cool. And I was like, wow, OK, awesome, man. Come in, have a good time. My favorite styles, uh, growing up, I, I listened to a lot of 90s hip hop and Latin music. But when it comes to genres, I like them all. I like all music. Anything that I could see makes people happy and makes them want to dance, that's that's what I like to play. That's, that's the kind of music I like. The most interesting event was actually a charity event for uh, cancer research, which I actually, uh, that's where I met DJ Rob Reese for the first time. And we actually, it was three of us. Again, another three DJ event. And it ended up being that two DJs ended up take, doing most of the work. And at one point, D, uh, DJ Rob Reese would play a song and then I would mix into his song. And then while my song was playing, DJ Rob Reese would mix into my song. And we was like, oh, wow, this is fun. And we went back and forth for, I don't know, a good hour or two. and. And I thought that was fantastic. And we, we basically DJed from, I don't know, I think I got there around 7 p.m. and we finished around 7 a.m. And all the while people were going around in a circle and we were keeping them motivated to keep running around and just to raise money for cancer. It was one of the nicest things I've ever done when it comes to DJ. When I make announcements, I like to keep it professional, number one. Um, Obviously, I'm not gonna say anything that it may offend people, that's number one. But also, I like to keep it energetic and inviting. I want, I want people to kind of get my personality from my announcements and also kind of set the tone for the evening. It's gonna be fun. That's basically it. what I'm looking to kind of uh, convey with my announcements. If no one is dancing, um, I've been there many times before, you, you can do several things. You can play a game, what I typically like to do is I like to play a beautiful love song and ask the guests to grab someone they love and join the couple out on the dance floor. That usually brings out almost everyone out onto the dance floor. Then once I have them there, then I start dropping some bangers and keep them going as much as I can. I've lost track over the years. It's been 20 plus years, but you figure about 30 weddings a year, for 20 years, probably a little bit over 600 weddings. So when you have, when you work in a wedding, it's 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 a little bit more of a challenge than working in a club. Because in a club, typically the club owners set the style of music that you're supposed to play, and you can stick to that. And the ages are pretty much set as well. So it's, in a sense, it's easier. But when you're working in a wedding or any kind of uh, mobile event, you don't know who's there. So you have to really kind of play to the crowd. It could be grandmas and it could be children as young as three years old so you have to be able to try to play to everyone but I typically organize the older music earlier in the evening where people are all full of energy and not so tired yet and then as the evening progresses the older folks will start to kind of find their seats and maybe they're not so energetic anymore and they'll start playing the younger people's music but if hey if the older people are still in there, I'll mix in the oldies as well as with the new stuff. And then by the end of the evening, we're just full party, but we're just dropping all the fun stuff.